Let me get comfortable here for the show. Orale. Get comfortable here. <laughs> Make sure I'm ready. We are good? Ready to roll, guys? On this episode of Three Shots, Three Questions, we're with Tejano superstar, Little Joe. The five-time Grammy award-winning frontman has been rocking stages worldwide for more than 50 years. And we find out how it all got started. Joe, thank you for joining us on Three Shots, Three Questions. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey, My kind of interview, man. Ooh. It's an honor to have you here. I'll tell you how the show goes. We're going to take a shot of tequila. I'll ask you a question and then repeat that for questions two and three. Cool. You have fans all over the world, but you know, some of my audience might know your, might not know your history. So I want to start from the beginning. What was your upbringing like, and how did that influence everything you do today? You know, I, I'm a seven of 13 kids. We grew up picking cotton and chopping cotton. And uh, I was born in a car garage, dirt floor, three wall car garage when my dad moved the family from where he was sharecropping uh, near Temple. They moved from there to a black neighborhood, which I lived in for 11 years. And when I moved to where there were some Chicanos, I was surprised. Wait, what do you mean I'm not black? What are you talk about? <laughs> all my family, all my siblings, they just love music, man. And during those years, the jazz, the swing bands, that, was, that music was always in my house. My dad's music with his compadres and his songs. And the black music that you didn't hear on radio, but I, when I stayed at homes with the, my black friends. The music they played, the music I heard in the little bars. So it was an incredible mixture of genres and styles of music that became my musical DNA. Me cansé de decirle que yo sin ella de pena muero. At the age of 13, one of my cousins uh, decided he wanted to put a band together, so he rounded up myself and two other kids. And by the time we were 15, he had us uh, rehearsing and actually started performing. First paid performance was uh, at a school sock hop for five bucks, and I thought, man, this is better than picking cotton and picking pockets. I'll pick a guitar. Yeah. And music you know, has taken me into so many uh, situations. Some nights it would be totally black. There I am playing a black concert, you know. Next night could be totally all white, all country. Uh, the next night it could be all salsa, you know, all Chicanos, all, you know. But because of my musical background and yeah. variety, you know, which that's the spice in, in my life. You can win people over. It doesn't matter who they are. We're all connected. It's about feeling. People feel you or they don't. They like you or they don't. They can like you but not feel you. I know some great talents, great singers, but the people don't feel them, you know. And in turn, you see my little brother, Rocky Tobo, ah, <laughs> and people feel him, you know, like they just, they love him, you know. The magic that, that you create through music and you share that, is such an incredible feeling for me I'm a little, I'm a little emotional right now, man. That was a, that was very heartwarming. Man. Well, you know what That's you need. Good, man. You need a shot, man. I like your style, little Joe. Yeah, Let's man. See this. Salud. The nectar of la familia. There it is. You've been doing this for more than 50 years. You've recorded 70 albums. You do almost 100 shows a year. How do you keep up with a, such a rigorous schedule, and have such a youthful energy on stage? Oh, Mexican secret, tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I love what I do, it's magic. Uh, you know, I've been on stage with a stomach ache, a headache, and an arm ache. The worst ache is a heartache, man. Ouch. But you know what? If it weren't for those heartaches, the emotion, it wouldn't be there. I love everybody, especially the ladies, but they're like songs, you know. I love them all, I just can't remember them all. <laughs> there you go, knowledge from little Joe. <laughs> but it, what's the old saying? So many ladies, so little time. <laughs> but, <laughs> Story of my life, man, I mean, this is really... <laughs> Oh, I read your bio. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I can't describe it any other way, you know. That synergy of good feeling, positive thinking is what happens music and concerts. Put the energy out there and it comes back. You know, you feel the love, you know. 
I've gotten here through a lot of work, sacrifice, a lot of love, lots of luck, and a little bit of talent, <laughs> and uh, some tequila. Salud. Salud. Joe, you are an icon in the Chicano culture. You use your platform to adver advocate for Latino rights and to advance the culture. What inspires you to do that work? Well, the fact that I know the issues and I've lived them and I still do. And I just I, I just did a, a march for justice and education, the Cesar Chavez 26th annual march. I tell the story about how I met Cesar. Actually, I was in San Jose playing a show with. Uh, I'm talking, I'm doing an interview over the radio and on the phone for the show and uh, the interviewer, the DJ says, well, you know about Cesar Chavez, he's a communist, people say that he's in for himself and that pissed me off and, and I know I'm on the air, but I say, you know what, loco, I said, uh, la gente habla porque tiene un psico and, and, uh, and they talk and they don't even know what the hell they're talking about, they just talk. We finished the interview, I hung, hung the phone up. I go back to do sound check, somebody in the club says, Joe, there's another call for you. And I, but este vato didn't get enough. <laughs> Let me tell him. So I'll go back. Yeah. <laughs> and I hear this real calm, gentle voice. Little Joe, this is Cesar Chavez. He says, I just called to thank you for your kind words and defending La Causa. And, and it just blew me away, man. El Movimiento de United Form Workers gave me a bigger, better, wider platform to speak from. And they adapted the uh, Las Nubes as their marching song. There's another movement happening in Texas, La Raza Unida. That's something that really shook the political world. We see what's happening today, and those things haven't changed. Fortunately, La Raza, our kids are getting better educated. And education is the key to breaking the poverty of cycle and oppression and discrimination and all those things that I grew up feeling. Sing it with us. But you know, no matter how much a bitch you complain about, no matter what, you know, I'm a really lucky person. Gracias Dios, it doesn't matter to me where I go. I always do well, possibly because I'm not materialistic and I'm good. I'm good with lo poco que tengo, that's more than I, than I need so I can share some. Do you want to take another shot? I mean, I don't want to impose, you know. Oh my God, let uh, me see. I don't uh, want to <laughs> threaten you with a good time. No, no, no. Uh, Believe me, I am totally okay in getting better. <laughs> so is that. that a yes or no? <laughs> Simon que sí, yes okay. sir. There you go. Orale. Orale. As far as your music career goes, what's your proudest achievement? Oh, well, of course, you would always say the Grammys, but um, and accolades, yes, uh, certificates and proclamations and. Uh, but uh, the other awards, there's another one from the Grammys, the uh, governor of the Grammys. Uh, that's a special award. That's above the Grammy that I could consider a very, very special because it's for the, from the Academy itself. Little Joe, it is an honor. It is a privilege. Thank you for joining us on Thank Three you, sir. Three Questions. I really appreciate it. Gracias. Ladies and gentlemen, Little Joe. I yeah. appreciate you having me over. Yes. Uh, I'll be honest, the tequila was what drew me here. <laughs> but the charm is what kept it. Oh, well, oh my God. Yeah.